continuing on with all of the fun reptile upgrades and the different setup and enclosure builds that we're doing this one i kind of took a few little shortcuts to make this a much quicker video because every once in a while i think it's nice to have a little short video with just a quick little setup so this is our female ghost brooks king snake who just went in here and who is not very happy with me at all but with that being said so here's her new setup at least for the time being so this is the zoom ed uh, 36 by 18 by 18 or like 40 gallon breeder front opening enclosure. So taking a lot of the same things that we've talked about in multiple videos where we're here, we'll zoom out a little bit where we're going to see that we're taking advantage of a lot of different things to give them optimal habitation. So we begin with the substrate as usual. So this substrate is a mix of organic topsoil, a little bit of sphagnum moss and play sand which kind of mimics a lot of where the ghost or the Florida or the Eastern taxonomy is a whole thing. So King Snake people, please don't yell at me. Um, we call her Ghost Brooks. That's what we purchased under. Um, and then I think essentially it's all classified as Eastern uh, King Snake, but the Florida King Snakes are the much larger uh, variety of them. And she is indeed, she's pretty big already. And she's growing like a weed who has now completely uh, you know, gone away, unfortunately. Oh, there she is. She's hanging out in the back. We'll see if she comes up while we talk. But, so we start with the substrate. Then we move on to everything else. We have to think about hides, climbing abilities, basking, and all that jazz. Um, eventually, I'm going to put a halogen light on here. Um, so, unfortunately, I don't have that ready to go. But I just wanted to record this uh, really quick because a bit of a time crunch at the moment, honestly. I have a whole bunch of stuff going on. But I just wanted to do a quick little setup guide. Or, I guess, setup video, I should say. So the hides, we have one hide, we have two hide, we have three hide, and then they can bury underneath this piece of cork bark. There's this rock pile right here that is siliconed together right there, so that way hopefully it won't shift around as she gets larger, as well as that kind of back area right there, while still exposed um, a little bit more than, say, one of these hides, does provide another place for them to hide away. This gives her the ability to climb up into here, as well as provide a little bit of cover from the air, um, plenty of other things for her to climb around on and to experience and see and move around on. So we have vines for her that kind of also gives a little bit of cover. We have real wood here and here. Um, we have plenty of artificial plants as well. Um, it's essentially just nice and cluttered and crowded for an animal that when she does want to feel secure, can feel secure. Now her being a king snake, she's a little bit more diurnal, still a bit of a crepuscular animal, most active at dusk and at dawn. Um, not a whole lot in the middle of the night, not a whole lot in the middle of the day. Although as with most captive animals, they will start to acclimate to your schedule. Um, and king snakes obviously being a very good pet reptile species in general, uh, she will absolutely acclimate to that. So if we can go back here, we can actually see her cruising around, just checking her out. I just put her in here, but she was being a feisty little bugger, so that's why she just went in here. Uh, nice big water dish like that. They do have a tendency to bury up under here, so that's why in most of my setups, I always try to have, um, regardless of what kind it is, with the exception of true bioactive, um, I always like to have these large plastic water bowls here, so that way they can easily be interchanged out and washed out um, and sanitized properly to allow you know for healthy living and everything like that. Um, but beyond that, it's just something that is just another example of uh, cluttered reptile space or cluttered setups to allow for plenty of opportunity for her to explore, for her to move around and to choose where she wants to be. Um, for the colubrids in this room, it's definitely more of an ambient temperature kind of deal, but I will provide a nice little halogen eventually another um, SureSun uh, VivTech bulb up here UVB for her to be able to bask and I'll probably put it back here. Um, this will essentially be the warm side of the enclosure and then here will be the cool side. Um, I'm aware, and then, although I might decide to move stuff around because the rocks obviously do uh, retain that heat a little bit better than others. Um, so I haven't quite decided yet, but for the summertime um, and before I get the really nice UVB bulbs, I'm just going to stick with the halogen for the time being. She will be okay for a while. Eventually I will upgrade that and I will plan on doing a whole other video and subsequent viewings about that as we go along with a lot of the other different things that we're doing along our little journey here. But just a quick little, you know, five minute video or so of just showing off a nice little quick easy setup for a king snake. So, you know, the ambient temp in here is between 79 and 87. It's honestly a little warmer than I would like. 
Um, I plan on eventually getting like full HVAC AC in here so that way I'll be a little bit more dependent on the basking areas for some of the more ambient temperature colubrid weather animals, which is perfectly fine. That way it will be able to better kind of recreate or allow them to have their natural um, exhibit their natural behavior and things like that. But for the time being, I think this is a pretty good setup and example of how you can make a really nice setup for your pet king snake. And in all honesty, a lot of other different colubrid species snakes too. It's very similar to the corn snake one that we did just a couple weeks ago, but this being a much uh, larger version of that. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, you get to see just kind of more little examples of how we do things, just trying to do better by our animals in every little way possible that we can to improve um, our husbandry practices, as well as kind of hopefully move away from those old habits that we've all kind of established as essentially herpeticulture dogma that we need to move away from so that way we can take our hobby forward moving on down the road. So again, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys are having a great day. Stay tuned for more reptile content and we will check in next time.